Hi guys! <laughs> Welcome to the Knitting Expat Podcast channel. My name is Mina and I'm typically the host of the Knitting Expat Podcast. I'm here today with a very special video introducing my latest shawl pattern, which is the Changes Shawl. I'll open it up and show you in full in a second. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to do a quick little introduction video. Hello! Hello Trouble! Yeah? Okay, let's not go after the camera because she's immediately going to want to grab the camera. I have an apple prepared for you. Would you like an apple? Can you just sit here and chew on your apple? That's good girl. Good girl. Yeah? Look how I find me over. I'm just going to sit here next to mummy. Uh, there you go. Alright, hopefully that will keep her entertained for a couple of minutes so I can do this quickly. Um, this is my daughter Layla, by the way, if you are new to the okay. channel. She's uh, one years old and quite the handful. Um, anyway, so this is the changes shawl, and I am showing the right side, yes. Um, in its full glory, it is a pretty big shawl, so it, you've got one tip at this end, one point, it's all the way across, and it keeps going, and then you have another tip at this end. So it's basically identical on both sides. You actually start by working this center square panel and then from picking up stitches on either side then you work outwards in either direction one bit at a time. So the main thing I wanted to tell you was that this particular design was knit out of um, Primrose Yarn Company on her um, on the Adelaide Singles Base. Um, this main colour that I use for the shawl is called Charcoal and Glitter and the minis that I use, I used 10 different mini skeins and um, I'm going to see if I can remember them. So we started out with the first one here is, I think, I believe it's Ratatat. Oh. Then the yeah. brown one here is Landslide. The next one, this sort of like creamy beige one, is um, Embers. Then we have Dirty Gold, uh, Maple Leaf. Then I believe it was uh, Spacesuit. Real um. Hipsters Wear Denim. <laughs> then I think it was uh, Astrology. I think it was astrology <laughs> and then you had Salem and the last one is escaping me right now um, I cannot remember but <laughs> I think I did pretty good I remembered nine out of ten of the minis and yeah and so those yeah. ten colors are used in the other three sections throughout and then whatever yarn I had left at the end I used it to make up a couple of tassels to decorate the end the tassels are optional you don't have to do that um, the, the shawl in its entirety has an I-cord edge, which is worked as you go. So once you finish and you've bound off, you've bound off, the shawl is finished. There is no uh, there's no additional finishing work. <laughs> Apologies for Layla's chatting. She's um, incredibly chatty these days. And uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you that Kelsey, who's the dyer behind um, Primrose Young Company, she is putting together kits for this shawl that will be on her website. I'm not sure exactly, this should be available now, but I'm not entirely sure what time during the day she's posting them. Um, she said the pattern is is going to be published on the 20th of March, which should be today when you see this video. I'm recording this on the 19th of March, but it won't go up until tomorrow, so the 20th, hopefully, when you're seeing this. And... Uh, yeah, so hopefully Kelsey's kits will be up soon. She is in America and I am in the UK, so there was a bit of a time difference there. And um, and yeah, so just to let you know, because this shawl is pretty big, like you saw, it is pretty huge. I used pretty much every scrap of the main colour yarn that I had from Kelsey. Yeah. And I my skeins were actually heavy, so um, I used over 900 yards in total for this shawl. I made some modifications to it to reduce the yardage requirements hey overall but um uh, my no. testers i've had this pattern test knitted my, my test knitters have come back and most of them have still used over 900 yards for <laughs> yes honey for this shawl so um i'm just putting this out there depending on the skeins of yarn that you are using if you're using finger and weight yarn that has at least 400, 460 yards per 100 grams or per skein then you should be fine um, if your skeins are heavy and you will overall have about that much yardage, um, around 900, 920 yards, then you'll be fine. If you will have less than that, then um, you will either need to have a third skein of your main colour or um, 
uh, or there is a modification I've added to the pattern where, and I'll explain the modification to you now so you know what it is going in. Um, in this section here, this texture section here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but you see here there's, you've got one stripe of the main colour, one of the contrast colour, another one of the main colour, and then there's actually two, um, ooh, like a double repeat of the contrast colour afterwards. So, uh, instead of, so each stripe is actually two rows. So, here you go, here's your apple. So instead of working one stripe main colour, one stripe contrast colour, one stripe main colour, then two two stripe equivalents of um, the contrast colour, you'll just do one main colour stripe and then three um, stripes of the contrast colour, skipping that extra main colour stripe in the middle there. That will save you a significant amount of yarn actually overall. Um, so if your yard is a bit short, then that should make up the difference. I'm sorry, she's being super squirmy this afternoon. She just wants to grab the camera and I'm trying to stop her from um, knocking it off. Yeah? You being a menace? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Anyway, so that's basically the main thing I wanted to tell you. And like I mentioned, Kelsey is putting kits together for this pattern, but um, I've spoken with her about the yardage situation, and she said that they're gonna add an additional mini skein, one or two, depending on which base it is, um, of the main color to the kits in order to get you up to the right amount of yardage for your main color. So if you are purchasing a kit from Kelsey, uh, you should have more than enough yarn um, for the main colour to not have to do the modification. The modification is there if you want to. It will probably reduce the length of the shawl by around two to four inches, depending on how aggressively you block it. And um, the only other thing to bear in mind is the gauge. Now I have specified the, road, the stitch gauge in the pattern. Um, I believe it's something like 22 stitches um, over four inches after being aggressively blocked. And um, yeah, so if your gauge is vastly different to that, then again, your yardage usage, your yardage that you will need will be um, quite different as well. So bear that in mind. If you are a loose knitter, I highly recommend you go down a needle size than what is recommended in the pattern. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it really. I just wanted to uh, put some of this information into video. It will be on the pattern page for the most part, I think most of this information will be on the pattern page anyway, but I wanted to put it out there for you um, so you had that all in one place as well for anyone who prefers a video format. And I know sometimes people don't necessarily read the pattern pages properly and they skip over information because there's a lot of writing. So um, I wanted to make sure <laughs> that you guys got the uh, relevant information and um, yeah. Anyway, so we are also going to be running a knit along for this shawl in the Knitting Expat podcast group on Ravelry. I will post links to that, um, those threads down below. The rules and everything will be in that thread. And, uh, and yeah, I'm off to entertain this little nugget for the rest of the day. She's making it very difficult these days to get any work done um, when she's awake. But that's fine. She is at a very inquisitive age right now. And I only have her here with on, the, on this video because I know so many of you miss seeing her on the podcast. It is, as you've seen the way she is, it is incredibly, di it would be incredibly difficult for me to actually record a full podcast with her in the room with me. Um, she constantly wants to grab the camera and um, all my knitting. It would, it, would be, it would be too much for me right now with the way she is. Maybe when she's a little bit older and is able to just sit and colour for a little bit um, whilst I record, she can be in the room with me. But for now, yeah. Oh, You're standing! I don't know if you guys just caught a glimpse of that. She stood up for a moment on her own. She also took her first steps this morning, which was so sweet. But, um, oh, she's uh, still building up her confidence. Yeah? Want your rifle? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mummy will have some later, okay? Ah. <laughs> She's also really into feeding other people. <laughs> she loves sharing her food and uh, trying to get other people to eat it. Ah. Okay, I gotta go now. <laughs> and I will see you guys soon for a proper podcast. Alright, take care. Bye. Can you say bye, Layla? Can you say bye? Bye.
bye. Say bye.